What's up? I hope you are having a great Sunday. I figured today we will go over some of my work from a programming module. We will be going over GUI development. First, what is a GUI? A GUI or a GUI is a set of interactive graphical components that uses so you can interact with. It allows a user to interact with a system in a more user-friendly manner via a visual friendly interface. Second, why am I creating a GUI? I enjoy it, but more importantly, it is required for an, for an assignment, more specifically assignment one, question one. Third, how will I build my GUI? I will take advantage of Qt Creator, C++, and maybe CSS. If you aren't familiar with Qt Creator, it is where I am right now on screen. Qt Creator is a cross-platform integrated development environment, or IDE, that would help you create applications with the Qt framework. The great thing is Qt Creator supports various languages, C++, QML, JavaScript, Python, CSS, etc. To put it in simple terms, Qt Creator makes building GUIs very simple. So what's the plan? I will read my problem description. So that's my assignment description. The most important is, is there a picture? Yes, there was. I will create a new project in Qt Creator. I have one created right here. Let's go to it. Assignment one, question one. Here we are. It will be a console application. The reason being why I chose console application is I am not allowed to use Qt Designer. Now, what is Qt Designer, you may be asking. This is Qt Designer. Let's just choose a dialog with buttons. Okay, let's go with this one. Here we go. Notice, this is Qt Designer. The first thing that you would notice is that we have this dialog box right here. It's written dialog and we can minimize it, maximize it. We have, as you can see, two buttons, an OK button, a cancel button, a minimize button, and a close button. Qt Designer extrapolates or not, not extrapolates that's the wrong word hmm to hide a detail is to abstract that is the word cute designer abstracts a lot of the coding and makes it easier on the developers part so that would be you to create a gui using a drag and drop interface now notice, here's our dialog. And on the left, we have this huge area with different widgets. We have layouts, we have spaces, we have buttons. Let's just drag one. Let's drag a push button. There we go. And let's say, click me. We now have a new push button that says, click me. Let's go ahead and grab something else. Let's grab a label. Let's move our push button here and let's move our label here. Uh, this. <laughs> This is spelled wrong. Chick me. What label can we have here? Okay. Okay. Button. Click there. We now have a label and a button. And we have written no code. Unfortunately, I am not allowed to use Qt Designer in my project. So I will be creating a console application that will require me to hard code everything which sounds like a, a lot, but it actually isn't. So now that I have created a new project in Qt Creator, as I said, it will be a console application. I now have access to the entire Qt library, and therefore I have a myriad of widgets which I can take advantage of. The process to do this is I will need to create a new class that will inherit the properties of a specific Qt widget. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to Qt Designer. 
Notice this is an o this OK button is a push button. This click button is a push button. Now, obviously, you as, you as a user have interacted with push buttons throughout your life. Maybe when you submitted a form, something of that nature. And when you clicked the button, you expected some behavior to occur. But what if you as a developer wanted more behavior or more functionality? Well, this is the advantage of Qt Creator. All you would have to do is create a class, have that class inherit in some way the widget, and then you modify its behavior. In my case, all I need is to inherit Qt Dialog. This will allow my class to have the access of Qt Dialog, which is simply an interface that allows communication between the user and the system. And I will then adapt it to my specific use case. So let's go back to my project. So you notice we have a headers folder, a sources folder, and a dot profile. This project file here, just some stuff that's required for my build. Nothing too important right now. Well, very important, but nothing that we will go through right now. What's important is the software review dialogue.h file. If you are familiar with C++, this is my interface file or my header file. Notice I include two libraries, QDialog and QString. I will create my own class that will inherit QDialog. I then set my class methods and members. The most important is the constructor. This will set all my members and handle the layout of my GUI. All of these forward declarations make it somewhat faster for the compiler to compile my code, as opposed to doing an include checkbox and include queue label. So here's the beginning of my class called Software Review Dialog, which, inherit, which inherits publicly Qt Dialog. I then have this call, this thing called Q object. This will allow my GUI to access signal and slot functionality. A signal and slot, if you aren't aware or you aren't familiar with what signal and slots are, in its most basic sense, a signal and slot essentially is action and reaction behavior such as when you click on a button, the action is clicked, what is the reaction? Maybe the reaction should be to submit some form or validate some data. I then have my publicly defined constructor, which takes as parameter Q widget parent, which is initially set to zero. I then under private have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do that again. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven members. Q label, which is a label. A Q line edit is a is a method is a no. A Q line edit is a means for a user to interact with the dialog. Same with date edit. We then have two buttons, add and display, and a checkbox. If we go into our .cpp file, which is also called our implementation file. Here is where we include all our necessary libraries. I then set my constructor. I initialize parent to be QDialog. And I set up my widgets. So line edit, new Q line edit, name label, new Q label. And I continually do this. Nothing impressive here. What is important, however, is starting at line 34, where we create the layout. There are many ways to create a layout. My intuition was I wanted to create four rows and then I have those rows stack upon each other. To do this, I take advantage of the horizontal box layout via QH box layout. I create my first row that only has name label and line edit. My second row has date label and date edit. My third row has space and a recommended checkbox. My fourth row has the add button. It has stretch and some display. I then create my main layout, which is a vertical box layout, and I add all four of my rows. If I save everything and I build this project, and if I run it, 
First I get my console and then I get my GUI. And here we go. You can see the title of the GUI is software review. And let's say I wanted to review Excel sheets. Very simple. The date, as you can see, it automatically fills in today's date. But if I wanted to, I could bring down a drop down, which causes a calendar pop up, which makes things a lot easier, a more friendly interface via which I can choose a date. Let's use tomorrow's date, the 19th. Do I want to recommend Excel sheets? Yes, I do. So I will tick my checkbox and I will go to add and nothing happens. So let's exit this. Why did nothing happen? Well, let's go back and look at our dot interface file or our dot h file. Notice, even though we have signal and slots, we aren't actually using it as they are commented out. Everything that you see here, I did in 30 minutes and that was my time that I allocated for it. I will come back at some further date and add functionality so that when I use my push buttons, something actually happens. Right, now that is it for this video, bye bye.